Well, hello, YouTube. I was actually searching YouTube this morning, and I saw that there are a lot of videos talking about the difference between the CFA program and an MBA program. And I did not see a video talking about CFA versus a Master of Science in Mathematical Finance or Financial Engineering or Financial Mathematics. And right now I can tell you that I'm in both of these programs, so I thought I'd take the time and share my opinion on when to do CFA, when to do a Master's, and what the differences are between them, and when you should do one over the other. Before I get started, let me talk about my background so you know where I'm coming from when I form my opinions here. I am actually a high school teacher, and I was very interested in finance, and I wanted to change careers, so I ended up pursuing a master's in the mathematical finance and the CFA at the same time. I really didn't know what I wanted to do, and I wanted to just cover as much area as I could, so I ended up signing up for the first exam of the CFA program as I started uh, my first semester of the mathematical finance program. At this point, I'm about two weeks away from uh, taking the CFA exam, and I'm about 80% complete with a master's in mathematical finance. So I have a pretty good idea at this point of what the curriculums are and how the curriculums differ between the two, and really what the goals are of the two programs. So now let's talk pros and cons, and we'll start out here with the CFA. Now, the biggest advantage the CFA has is that it is cheap. Compared to a master's program or an MBA, the CFA is going to be much cheaper. Now, if you register early like I did, the exam fee is $650, and then the enrollment fee is $450. Now, if you don't register early, the cost uh, goes up quite a bit. Now, the good thing about these costs is that some of them may be covered. Now, like I'm a veteran, and the GI Bill covers some of mine. Uh, I know that a lot of the students in my master's program are applying through scholarships just through our university, and they cover usually the exam fee at least, and then we'll end up paying the, our own enrollment fee. But no doubt about it, the CFA will end up being cheaper than a master's or an MBA. Next advantage it has is that it has a very broad curriculum. One of the reasons I signed up for CFA is because I didn't know what I wanted to do in the finance in industry. I knew I wanted to do something in finance, I just wasn't sure what it was. So I signed up for CFA because I knew it covered a lot of topics, and it covers a lot of topics. Uh, I can tell you that it covers anything from ethical responsibilities, the whole way to quantitative analysis that like you would actually find in a master's program and it also covers accounting I mean it covers almost anything you could think of next it is globally recognized and I can tell you when I go to take this exam in the next two weeks our admission ticket to get into the exam is our international passport okay on to cons I think the biggest con for me about pursuing the CFA exam is that it is three very large exams that cover an extreme amount of material and all have very low pass rates. If you go on the CFA's website right now, you can look at the pass rates for past exams, and it, they are all right around 50%. Now think about that. If you do really well on the first round of the CFA exam, and you study really hard, and you're, in, and you're in the top 50% and make it to round two. Now you're competing against all the people who just did the same thing as you and made it to round two. But still, only 50% of those people are now going to pass round two, and it just keeps getting more and more difficult. So I can tell you from my perspective, I think it was easier for me to study for my master's program because it's focused on a smaller set of material. Maybe in my financial econometrics class, uh, he said, the exam will be on these first four lectures, which was a manageable amount of material compared to the CFA, which says you're going to take the level one exam. It's here's your 5,000 pages. Good luck. And I just think that the master's program is much more manageable in that respect. Next con is that the CFA just has a lack of practical programming assignments and lack of practical assignments for me in general. If you take a master's degree, they're going to give you a programming language and they're going to say, perform this analysis or run this regression in this specific language so that you can also learn the programming language while you're learning finance. Now, as an example, as what the CFA does, the CFA will talk about maybe, as an example, I was reading a section today that was talking about computing be uh, beta. And one of the ways you can compute beta is by running a regression. The CFA simply says you can compute beta by running a regression, and then that is the end. It doesn't talk about what software to use to run the regression or specifically how to run the regression. It's very short in its description of how to actually compute beta 
running a regression. So I'd say the biggest, uh, another big downfall of the CFA is that it talks about how to do some of these things, but doesn't actually give us practical exercises on how to do them using real software. Then the third uh, big con for me is that when you sign up for the CFA, you're on your own. Now, certainly you can study and do all the practice questions, and if you don't understand something, you can turn to the internet, and most of the time that will work. But if there's something that you truly don't understand, uh, you're probably going to have to dish out some more money. I can tell you probably almost weekly I get uh, something in the mail asking me to send them more money to sign up for a mock exam or to sign up for a 90 minute review session to help me pass. But if you want real instructor assistance, uh, I'm just biased toward the master's program. Okay, now let's talk about pros and cons of mathematical finance master's program or financial mathematics or financial engineering. The biggest pro for me was that the curriculum can be tailored to meet your needs. If you look at the mathematical finance programs at a lot of the top universities in the United States, maybe in the top 25 uh, rankings, you can pick concentrations now. You can do a computational finance or maybe a risk concentration. And within those concentrations, the courses vary and you might even be able to select the courses within those concentrations. So for me, that's one of the biggest advantages to doing the master's program because you can say, well, I'm most interested in analyzing risk, so I'm going to take this risk concentration, and then I'll get some quantitative risk management exposure and some portfolio management exposure and things like that. Whereas the CFA says, this is our curriculum, you're going to learn the curriculum, and that's that. Uh, next, the master's program will force you to do practical programming exercises. And I have an example of this. In our financial econometrics class, I'm at the University of North Carolina. We have to uh, write a paper where we actually model data and then try to find the best forecasting model for the data. And you just aren't going to get anything like this in the CFA program. So we build our model and then we use MATLAB code to run to actually perform the regression and then we analyze which the best model is and at the end of all this, then we display all of our charts, which are output by MATLAB. And finally, we append on our MATLAB code. And this is just something that you're simply not going to get with a CFA program. So while the master's program is going to cost much more, I think that what you're getting is just much more worthwhile. Uh, next. Obviously, through a master's program, you're going to get instructor assistance. I can tell you that I meet with my instructors often, just through email or by actually going to their office, and that is where most of my learning occurs. When we have an advanced statistics class, some of those concepts are not always easy to understand, and it might take you, I mean, several hours before you fully understand one of those concepts, but meeting with a professor really speeds some of that uh, understanding up. Cons, obviously expense and geographical limitations. You'll have to move if you want to get to some of the top schools, perhaps. Now let's get to the portion that most of you are probably looking forward to, which is the difference in the curriculum of the two programs. So I have CFA lined out on the left, which are really just the main topics covered in the CFA. And then on the right, I have most of the core courses and some elective courses from a master's program in math finance. Now, I will tell you that there is a lot of overlap, and even with CFA Level 1, there is a lot of overlap between the Master of Finance and the CFA. So I tried to line these up so there's, they are easy to compare, but if you look at CFA, one of the first things they start, they start with is quantitative methods. The closest thing we have to that is our cross-section and time series analysis course, which both of these things are really just an advanced statistics course. and. Uh, I'm just still biased towards the master's program because while the CFA talks about the statistical tests that you need to know, in the master's program we actually perform the tests using SAS and using real data. And don't get me wrong, CFA may use small data sets and ask you to perform it by hand, it's just not the same as using an actual programming language to do that. Other things that are similar. Uh, CFA has a fixed income section, we have a fixed income course, CFA has a derivative section, we have a whole derivatives course. 
one of the big differences is that CFA spends a lot of time on ethics and standards and I can tell you it is just a lot of very dry reading and that's what it starts with. Um, we do not have that in the masters, not saying it's not important, but uh, it is just a long dry process of reading. The other thing, and well, really the big part where the master's program starts to differ from the CFA is through the elective courses. Like we have a quantitative risk management course, which is one of the most useful courses at UNCC where someone from Wells Fargo actually comes and teaches it to us and they're in Wells Fargo's risk department. And the way the course works is they'll pull and say, maybe take Apple, uh, the historical adjusted prices for Apple for the last two years and I want you to calculate the expected shortfall using this method and you can use any programming language you want and just a course like that is the perfect example of why I'm biased towards the master's program because there's nothing in CFA that is going to give you that type of experience as using a programming language to compute some desired task that the professor gives you. So despite my obvious bias towards the master's program, I do believe CFA has a place, but I believe that place is strictly in continuing education. And I'm going to explain why here. If you look at some advanced financial positions, uh, job postings, a lot of them that will say, well, we prefer that you have a master's degree and or a CFA designation. So I agree that the CFA designation might get you an interview, but at this point I've interviewed with Wells Fargo, BB&T and Ally Financial. And all of them have asked me technical questions that I would not have known if I just pursued the CFA. And let me give you an example. Um, one of the questions was, do you understand logistic regression? And could you perform it in SAS? If you can perform it in SAS, what's the procedure to perform it in SAS? And that's just something that you cannot answer if you only stick with the CFA program. If you do a master's program and get some exposure to SAS while learning logistic regression, you're going to be in a much better position to answer questions like that. So I do believe that CFA is useful and I will probably, if I do continue on in the program, it will be for continuing education. Maybe a couple years after I finish out my master's program, if I feel like I start forgetting some things, I imagine that CFA levels two and three will do a great job of helping me remember some of the things I forgot from the master's program. But apart from that, I probably won't continue on past level one unless my employer is paying me or paying for the exams. So to finish up here, I believe the master's of, uh, master of Science in Math Finance or Financial Math or Financial Engineering takes definite precedence over the CFA. People in my programs are still doing the CFA and the FRM to continue for continuing education and just to maybe boost their risk management chops. But as a whole, I still believe that the master's is the core education that you need in order to get some of these jobs. And as I said in the last slide, employers are more concerned from what my experience is with your technical abilities and your application of the financial knowledge rather than just the financial knowledge on its own. So that's why I believe that the master's program takes precedence over the CFA. I'm sure a lot of you out there probably disagree with me. If you are a CFA charter holder and you think uh, that I'm completely wrong, I invite you to comment and we'll share a discussion, but I appreciate you watching. Please give me a like if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out.